Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Ubuntu Mate to take a screenshot. Now, the screenshot program within Ubuntu Mate is called Screenshot, also known as the Mate Screenshot. Now, there's three main ways that you can access the screenshot tool. One is through the keyboard shortcuts by selecting some keys on your keyboard that will allow you to take a screenshot. The other is going through the menus and selecting the tool and another is by using the terminal. If you're coming from Windows, you're probably used to the MS Microsoft DOS where you type in commands. The terminal is very similar. I'm going to stay away from the terminal in this video because most people coming over from Windows, if you're coming from Windows and want to know, learn how to take a screenshot within Linux or within Ubuntu Mate, then you're probably not familiar or comfortable with using the terminal. All right, to start with, on my keyboard, and it's different from keyboard to com keyboard and computer to computer, uh, where the print screen is and what it looks like and what uh, keys you might have to press to access it. On my laptop, I have to press the function key, which is FN, and then my print screen button is in a little box under the insert button called PRTSCN. When I press the two at the same time, it will take a screenshot of my desktop. From here I can rename it, I can select a folder to put it in, I can copy it to the clipboard by putting it in memory and then putting it within an application. I can save it, I can rename it and then save it in whatever folder I choose. My default folder is the pictures folder. Another way you can access the screenshot tool, and I'll go ahead and cancel this out, another way that you can ant access the screenshot tool is by going to the applications menu, choosing accessories, scrolling down to the tool called take screenshot. When you select that, it's not going to immediately take the screenshot like pressing the shortcut keys. From the screenshot tool, it will bring up a dialog box giving you three or actually four options. Three main options and a sub options that go along with the top two. The three options are to grab the whole desktop, just like pressing the shortcut keys. You can grab the current window, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Or you can select an area of your desktop just to take a screenshot of a certain area. All right, to start with, let's take a screenshot of the whole desktop. By doing so, let me go back to my default, which is zero. I played around with it earlier and, and put five seconds. But the default is set at zero, meaning the time I select take screenshot, it will take a screenshot of the entire desktop. If I don't want the mouse pointer to be included, I can deselect include the pointer. But in this case, if I want to, to show people where my, if I have a mouse or if I'm using a mouse, even if I'm using my touchpad, you might want someone to see that. And you can use it to point at something if you're capturing the screenshot. So the first way is to take the screenshot. You can see it instantly took the screenshot like just, just pressing the shortcut keys. Again, I can save it, cancel it, or copy to the clipboard. All right, let me show you how to save it to a, uh, your computer. I'm not going to leave the word screenshot. By default, that's the way it puts the file name is screenshot at, and then the year, the month, the, the day, and the time. And that's the format. I want to rename that and I want to put it in my pictures folder having zero zeros in the front. So I'm going to just put zero 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 and then I'm going to put one for picture one. Zero 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 one. This is just going to be a test and I can come out to the side and I write the word test. So when I hit the save button it's now placed in my picture folder. If I go to my file manager go to pictures and I have a lot of them in there as you can see, I've got the 0001 test picture. If I double click on it, it brings up my picture viewer, and there is my screenshot. You can see the time and everything on my top toolbars and the things I have currently open on the bottom. So that is a screenshot of the whole desktop. All right, let's go ahead and show you the next feature that it will do. The second feature is to grab a current window. Now I don't have any current windows open or any programs open to, well I do down here but they're not open. So let me open a few things on my desktop. I, I'm, I'm someone that likes calculators so I'm going to choose the calculator. I'm going to choose the Mate calculator. If I can keep my mouse steady. There's the Mate calculator and then I'm going to bring up my 
TI-83 that I used in school. So here are my three calculators, making them have three different windows to choose from. This one's the current one, or the active window. The reason I can tell when I look at my close buttons, these are grayed out. This is the one that's colorized with orange. This is my current window. So if I wanted to take a picture or a screenshot of just the current window, which again, you don't see it current here because that was the last one I pressed because I made this current, but it remembers the last window. So if I put to grab the current window and I say to take the screenshot, boom, there it is. You can see a little thumbnail picture, a little small preview of the current window. Now I'm not going to save this to a folder. It works the same way as saving the entire desktop. So let me cancel it. I'll make this one the active one or the current one. I go back to the program. Again, I'm going to show you that this was the active one. It's orange. This one's grayed out. This one's grayed out. This one's the orange one. I go back to grab the current window. Now notice here I've got to include the pointer just as I did with the grabbing the whole window. I can include the window border or I can take the window border off of it. Well, I go, you saw the, the calculator over here with the border on it. If I say to include the window border, it will include the top, but if I deselect that, then it will not include the top border. I can add a shadow or I can add a, a different border, a border all the way around it like a frame. Let me choose the shadow mode. Now I say take the screenshot and I don't know if you can see it here in the preview, but it did make a small shadow as if you had the picture and it was raised up and the light was shining to create a shadow beside of it. Now you do see a slight menu and that's not the title bar. That's not where it says calculator with the buttons. That's the actual menu bar here. So it did take off the title bar. So if you deselect that feature, it will not capture the, the title bar. It will only capture the menu bar. Let me cancel it and I'll show you the last feature. The last main feature is select an area to grab. When I choose to select an area to grab, notice that, let me go back up here and I'm going to choose this by default again. Well, it won't let me because it's grayed out. Uh, if I choose to select an area to grab, when I take the screenshot, anywhere that I select an area, it will allow me to, to take a snapshot of that area. Let's say, for example, in this particular calculator. I don't really care about capturing the whole calculator. Let's say that I'm at school and I, if I'm a teacher and have a student, if there's a certain set of keys that I want to focus on, instead of taking a snapshot or a screenshot of the whole calculator, I can just show them the area where the keys that I want them to focus on. So I can say, select the area to grab, take the screenshot. And if we were just using these three keys here, I can select the area. When I let go, it takes a screenshot of those areas. So when I save it or I copy it to the clipboard, and if the student's working with the calculator, then they can see the keys that I'm referring to. So that is the three main features of the Mate screenshot tool. Now the one feature, this is a sub feature that I like, that I use quite often, and that is the a time delay. You know, if I'm creating a website or sometimes I might be trying to help someone and send them an image up by email, if I just say to collect the whole desktop, I don't have time to go to my menus to access it, like if I want to show them where the, the take screenshot feature is at. But if I come over here and say grab the whole desktop, if I give it like a five second, I can increase it or decrease it. You have to figure out how fast you are with the computer, but I say around five seconds, say take the screenshot, it goes into a delay and I have to get there within five seconds. So now I highlight the take screenshot. If you look, it now has the menu I brought down and where I stopped at within that five seconds. That's exactly where it took the screenshot. So I can now save it or copy it to the clipboard, send it or put it on my web page. And those are the three ways that you can take a screenshot is by the desktop, a current window, or a selected area. Now, this particular, the Mate screenshot tool, is not the most advanced screenshot tool, but it's one of the basic ones. When you're switching over from Windows, you don't want to get a program that has a lot of features that can become intimidating. Switching from one operating system to another can be intimidating on its own. I'm creating all these videos and I'm putting them on a website so that if someone's thinking about switching over from Windows to a Linux program, such as Ubuntu Mate, 
they want to learn the features, the basic features. And once they've learned the basic features, then they can look for something more advanced. And I think that the Mate screenshot tool is an excellent basic screenshot tool for taking screenshots or images on your desktop so that you can save them and use them for yourself or so that you can take them and email them or put them within a document. I hope this helped you understand on how to take a screenshot.